Hey there everybody again. Um, so today I'm going to show you a video that's actually pretty quick. Um, I, I feel like all the stuff beforehand I went into a significant amount of detail without like really showing you enough of why um, this is good and going to be useful for you. And so, I mean, this is generic, but so is everything I've shown you so far. But I, I just wanted to show you actually how we could take an empty map. This is the map around Kalak where we're going to be building the mission over the next few videos and have kind of started already. Um, but I deleted all the units, so the only thing left is the scenery. Um, that's it. All the scenery that I'll probably accidentally move slightly right now and have to reload. No success! Sweet! <laughs> okay, so... Um, if you remember, I showed you in, a pre in previous videos that there were these units that you could just drop in. Um, like a breast R. And that by just dropping this in and putting here and hitting activate, you get Russian tanks to behave appropriately like Russian tanks. At four levels, they start at a random at a random uh, position. Actually, this specific copy in doesn't, but um, whatever, we're deleting it. Um, that there were air units, artillery units, column units, and you could just kind of throw column being like on road cars, and then you just kind of throw at them in there and hit activate, and they'll go. And then I showed you how to use those to build up an entire phase of a battle where the two sides had things going on, had those kind of units combined, and then they used the results of those kind of units, um, that being these units, the abreast, the air, the arts, the column. There can be others, too. These are just all I have so far. Um, and he used the results of those units to determine whether or not this phase of battle, a whole section of fighting, um, what the results of were it. Did the Germans win? Did the Russians win? Um, and and some, other, some other details, too, that could be put into there. And that made up a phase. And so I showed you these generic phases two videos back, actually three, I think. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull in two of these phases, um, which are those big collections of units that work together. I'm going to wire them up. I'm going to position them so that the cars just don't run into the river or something. Like, they're not going to do anything cool, but they're not going to, um, like, so they don't just, like, crash into something. Uh, wire up the phases, and I'm going to start up the game. So, like, effectively what I'm going to try to show you here is how quickly you can go from absolutely nothing to a very dynamic, um, very complex mission that all you have to do is start moving around and changing the units to really make it be unique. Um, and hopefully that's, that'll make that'll make the point of why the system is something good to use. Um, and then the next video, I'll start going into more details, and we're going to flesh out that whole mission. While these copy in, it takes a while. I'll, I'll detail what that other mission is just a little bit. So here's one of the phases, um, and we're just going to put it right here, just because I'm looking for a big blank space without rivers that I can easily put all the units. <laughs> like so, I mean, this is I'm showing you this for f deliberately for speed, but to give you the idea. And here's I copy in the other one. So we're just going to make this be a two-phase battle. So in other words, the battle will start somewhere, and then it will migrate to the other phase. You would you would normally use more than two because three allows you to have a central position where. Um, if and that's what we're gonna do is down here the Germans will be coming in heading towards the bridge at Kalak right here and then the next phase will be um, battling over this bridge and trying to get across basically I think I'm gonna put in I haven't decided yet but I think I'm gonna I think we're gonna put in and it's gonna be weeks we're gonna do this on the video um, columns of tanks getting across that bridge and then maybe have some really really um, cool or interesting it should be interesting Russian defenses over here and then the next phase of battle if the Germans were to win again would be over here would be the Germans pushing forward and trying to set up a foothold probably here and here. Maybe that's what it'll be. It'll be like a two-pronged, but they'll be weak, so maybe they'll just be going for one of these, maybe by the river. Um, and then the way that the battle will work is that it can literally shift between those three phases depending on the results. This one, we're just going to do a two-phase thing. So, like, uh, I'm going to do it, so well, I'll explain it. I'll explain it as it goes. The very first thing I'm going to do is separate out the controls. Oops, not rotate the controls. I do do that all the time. Those red buttons are big, but that's good. Being able to rotate things is good. Um, I like to define which one and like just kind of remember naming, naming things is not a bad thing to do ever. Um, which one is one and which one is two. So I'm going to call this and then I just put them over here in order. Ooh, I missed stuff. So that's phase two. This is phase one. Now, mind you, even as you're setting these up, we're not defining that this one starts first or this one starts second. You define that actually over here. Um, and we're going to do that later. But I'm calling them phase one and two just so they have unique names. 
So now all I'm going to do is I'm all the units are inside here. Uh, just to show you the details, this is well organized now. Um, what you have inside each of these phases, and this is just me from a super top level, is all your units. Um, so here we have all the German, uh, four of the German units, four of the Russian units, and then our airfields um, like that we take off from. Abreast is like tanks, uh, air is air, arts is artillery, and columns are like on roads. But they just move on a column, they don't need to be on road. Um, the map unit is a little bit interesting. I just added this. Um, it This displays, the map unit from the phase perspective is actually just this box and this box. And it displays when the phase hits a success condition, like Germans win or Russians win, it, it displays that. And it says effectively something, oh, I'll just tell you what it says. Oh, uh, it says like, this is a German win, moving to the next phase, like whatever. If we can make that be cooler, I don't know how any of this crap looks or works. Like I'm just trying different, these are zone threes and these are zone twos, so I know what they look like, because I don't know what that crap looks like. Um, then the other thing that we have is the control units and this controls all the units. So like, remember there was, if we see in here, there's going to be a corresponding control abreast G, there's abreast G. This bit controls these pits. Again, I'm not gonna go into, these details were touched on in earlier videos, but that doesn't matter to right now. All that matters is that we have this big working system here. And that's all there. And all we did was copy and paste it in. And now I'm going to turn on this kind of map. And I'm just going to position these guys so they don't run into shit. So basically I'll, I'll highlight with the mouse kind of where we're at. This is an on-road unit, like a column unit. Um, and it's going to come out here and then move in a straight line to supply and we'll be providing supplies to these tanks so like as this guy completes the tanks will get tougher um and the airplanes could get tougher too but these are the tanks so that's the next thing and these tanks move in an abreast that's why they're called that um route to about right here and then call back and i have this battle set up so that the dudes are really close to each other like probably too close to each other but i want it to happen very fast because i'm watching for some win and lose conditions and i want it to happen as fast as possible um and then there's some artillery units right here and some artillery units right here. They all look like they're in somewhat okay locations. I mean, like those are kind of in the trees, but like nothing is running into anything, um, like a building or a river. So I don't care. So now I'm looking on the Russian side and here's, so these kind of suck because they're kind of in the trees. But again, we don't care. Um, we just want it to be running. And this gives us enough to like set up a generic battle and start tweaking it, um, testing it, seeing what we want to change about it. And then we'll move phase two to do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna pull it out of river zone over there. And I know that I can do this faster than anybody else because I know where all these little components are, but it, there's only a few components in there and it doesn't take long to learn. Um, so yeah, these guys are actually pretty safe too. I don't see any, like sometimes there's hard to see ice patches. Uh, I, this is, I mean, as you can see, it's really dumb to have this teeny tiny little like, that, what is it, it's probably, yeah, like one and a half kilometer wide battle zone that's a long, thin column. Uh, but it's great for testing. Uh, silly for the world. Nonetheless, you'll see that it still looks pretty cool. So now all we have to do is start this, and then I'm just going to start the game. Like, we're done. Okay, I lied. We're not quite done, but we're so close. Bring in a mission begin. This shit takes forever sometimes. Um, and then we'll bring in a timer. This is something I mentioned before, but you don't want to start activating these dudes until like a little bit in. It's really like just a second, but I, I just give it like 23 seconds because it doesn't matter. I also find that like when you start up a whole bunch of units right at the beginning of a mission, sometimes it crashes. It's not often. Um, I actually find that the server is much more stable than the client right now, um, but whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with phase one first. And so phase one was the one on the left closest to clock. And I'm going to say to phase one, activate, because these buttons are activate and deactivate for phase one. And this is success Russian and success German for phase one. And then these extra four on the end are just buffers that trail out from that. I'll explain it here in a second. Um, and so I'm going to activate there. And I always say deactivate to the one, the phase I'm not using. And there is actually a hard reason for it. Last time I said, like, I just kind of did that for safety, but I actually changed something. And I made it so, this is something that you might want to consider. I made it so that all the units except artillery begin deactivated. So when you put them in the mission, you've got to say activate to them or they'll never do anything. Artillery, on the other hand, starts activated. 
Um, and I did that because if I if performance allows it and I just can't test it enough yet, I would love it for the artillery and all the phases to always be active because then it gives me some life in the areas that are quiet. So like when this phase is active, all this stuff is shut down. But if I could leave the artillery up and then maybe just put in a single column of trucks that randomly ran one of the roads between the two phases, then the, the world would be more alive. And so like, and it would be a very low performance cost, I think. So I'm kind of leaving that in there deliberately. And then right now, we're going to say, to, if you say explicitly deactivate, it will turn off the artillery. OK, aside done. Reactivating phase one, deactivating phase two, that starts the mission. And from here, it pretty much just will go in phase one until there's a success Russian or a success German. And so we say, if success Russian, let's deactivate our current phase, because we're always going to do that when there's a success, even when we do what we're going to do here, which is bounce right back to um, to the same phase. Because what we're saying is that if the Russians win, we just stay here. Normally, if the Russians win, we'd like move here, or we would set a global win condition, like we go to the next mission, the Russians won totally. But because this is testing, I want it to run into forever. I just have it restart that phase. If the Germans win, then we deactivate this phase, and then seven minutes later, there's a seven minute buffer right here that really needs to be there. <laughs> um, then seven minutes later, we're gonna start this phase, the second one, and this will start the second phase. So now this guy's deactivated from here, and all the units will retreat and then disappear. And the second phase is activated and will start running. And it's going to, if the Russians win, um, this one, it's going to bounce back. Oops. It's going to bounce back to that position. So if. The, the Germans had won and moved us here, right? So Germans won, activated phase two. Phase two started, Russians won, deactivated this phase, activated phase one, because we went back to over here. If the Germans, on the other hand, win, then we're going to behave just like if the Russians won up there. I think I have something broken here. I do. Remember when I moved that stuff over? I moved it all wrong. Fortunately, this is very easy to clean up. Sorry about this delay. I'm just making sure everything is right. Cool. OK, cool. So if the Russians win here, now we're going to fix it. They, of course, deactivate themselves and move back to phase one. And if the Germans win, they deactivate themselves and move back to the same phase they're at, just like the Russians stood up here. Now we're done. So check this out. We're on our way. Next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of fuss for moving this over to the server. Like, yeah, I'm going to go run this on the server and show it to you right now. Um, my really crappy... It's not crappy, actually. My uh, open source recording software doesn't let me do a lot. Um, so the the video itself might look a little strange if I actually go into the mission, which I will. Um, but you'll be able to see everything from the map, which I'm sure will look fine. Just making sure I didn't do anything totally foolish. I may have, and this might not totally work, and then I'll cut another video. <laughs> okay. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, it takes it a second to shut down.
So in, let's take a look. In 14 minutes, um, including with copious amounts of ludicrous ex exegesis by me, we went from nothing to what you're about to see. Oh, I did make one small mistake. I should have moved the airfields around so that we could see stuff better. Um, it might be a little difficult to see what's going on. So we, oh well, we'll just have to go into the mission. Um, so, you can see the airplanes have already started over here. Um, this is the best I can do with icons. It'll get better at some point. But this just means like this is where those column units are. This is the big airplanes. Um, here's some little artillery things, and here's where the tanks are. And like as I showed in the mission, they're all smushed up. And then this is the one that has its icons active because um, this is the mission. This is the phase that's active. And when this phase finishes, if the Russians or the Germans win, um, then it'll move to this phase. And we can see whether or not they win or lose um, by watching these letters. This will end up looking better too. Like as you can see, this one gets hidden by the airfield if you zoom out. Um, I really haven't put any effort into like the visual display yet, um, but I will, I will. Um, this shows you the level that the phase is at for each side. If you remember from a previous video, and, and if you don't, it's totally fine. The way that the phase works is that each side, the Germans and the Russians have a, a level that they're at, um, A, B, C, or D, where A means they're really succeeding. Like all their units, their internal units have succeeded multiple times. Um, and D means that their units have failed quite a bit. And it, it's an interesting scale in that it, it, it's really kind of a buffer that moves up and down depending on events. Like it can kind of shift all kinds of directions depending on what's happening. And the interactions of events control that a great deal. Um, but, but it's very consistent that um, the more your units win, whatever their win condition is, the higher your level will be. And generally when you moving to the next phase involves some shift of that value. And so for this one, it's it set such that um, whoever gets the other side down to D twice, it doesn't have to be twice in a row, it just has to be twice ever, um, will cause the phase to shift. And then the phase shifts, and we're playing Borderlands. Uh, sorry, dumb joke. The And when that happens, then we'll move over, and the phase will start here, and you'll see a, an identical, actually, icon set up here uh, along this battle. So let's actually go ahead. Um, I've also found that these icons redraw themselves all the time. I'm not sending any signals to them except for like when those phases change. So I don't know why that happens, but it does. That said, the fact that I can turn icons on and off and messages on and off is awesome. Because uh, I also showed there's icons that show up right here and right here when the phase ends to indicate that. Because there is like a seven minute transition. When it moves from here to here, it takes seven minutes for all. But during that time, all these units are retreating. And the idea is that by seven minutes, I'm pretty sure they've all retreated. Um, this is something going into the technical side a little bit that I've been thinking about is I really want it to be like really certain that all the units retreated instead of it be a timer. But it, it's just so complicated, I'm not sure that it's worth it. Um, but it is doable, so I'll think about it. So let's let's go ahead and look at it. This might look strange. Um, I'm not sure how this recording software really records 3D video. I know it does, but it might look strange. So, since everything starts kind of randomly, we actually don't even know what's in there. I'm just going to move us out to some units to see what's going on. Um, so I have some artillery. Oh look, it just got bombed! That's awesome! And what bombed it? Oh, AT-111s! One got hit. I'm looking for some uh, column units. If there's any left. This is, oh no, that's a repair unit. Sorry, I just know what these things are. Um, and I won't lead you through too much. Okay, good. Yeah, here's a column. Cool. So, see, this column is actually just about to show up and land supplies. Now, this is the thing, like, I want it to be able to do. Um, I want it to like drive into little tents, or I want it to be able to drive into a little hangar or something, but we don't really have that yet. There's not like a static unit I can use for that yet. 
And I kind of decided, if you heard in the other video, I was thinking about using the airplane tents again, but I, I really don't like that. I'm not, I'm not going to. They're just going to stay out in the open. So you'll see these air these supply units are, are programmed such that when they get close to their um, supply depot, which is the uh, various buildings you can see in the dis slight distance, um, they're going to span out and then kind of like move up and land themselves up abreast and then deactivate. And at that point when they deactivate, then they have provided supplies and the tanks will be on their next spawn will be better tanks. Um, and how that wires up, like what the supplies supply is totally arbitrary and up to you in the mission. That's just how it's wired up by default. In fact, I actually lied to you. That's not how it's wired up by default. The way it's wired up by default is that these guys are supplying the airplanes, I think. And the tanks are supplying them. Yeah, because when the tanks are succeeding, then when the tanks finish or succeed, then they're effectively saying that the supply units can be, um, are safer to move in. Yes, yeah, so these units will come in, they come in at different locations, you can set them how you want. Um, here, yeah, here's a good top level view. I mean, this is just the default. Um, so we can see in the distance, the exponential looking curve is the supply units coming into their base and those are brand new tanks that just spawned right in front of them and then we see their artillery to the right and the left for the Germans and if I turn the camera around if I can do that from here well um, we'll see yeah so see here's the Russians now see here the HE 111s totally destroyed them over here and they destroyed the supply unit for their artillery on the left which means that that artillery will have a lot of difficulty repairing itself it'll take a while so on this mission the Germans got a jump start um, and that's part of what's fun is that depending on which unit start and just some chance that's just out there like um, really determines who gets who starts winning um, I don't think that any phase any of these have shifted yet it takes a bit for the mission to get going enough basically there's kind of like a initializer buffer that kind of like stops the a b c and d switching of scores from really getting going until the mission is kind of started um, which is about now and then it's the events that determine whether or not and when those things go up and down and when it shifts to the next phase. With a setup like this where it's really close like this and we just left it to the AI, I think that it would shift phase probably in about 25 minutes to 40 minutes. Um, if even just myself went up and started shooting down planes, provided I succeeded at doing that, <laughs> I think I could push it um, if I stayed on one side to like maybe a 20 minute shift for sure. And I'm not sure when there's a whole bunch of people playing, we'll find out. And all that's tweakable, so if it ends up being too fast or too slow, we'll just mess with it. Um, thanks so much for watching, and uh, don't be this guy.